friends. I need to change my strings. Tomorrow's a fiddle contest. I've really been putting this off. And so I thought, why not make this available so that if you change your strings, you can join me. So I've got my fiddle. I put my shoulder rest on because I feel like it makes it a little less slippery. And I'm just going to run this with you. There's a good angle so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to start with my A string and I'll just kind of talk you through what I'm doing. First, you can notice if your fine tuners are getting a little bit tight, they tend to get screwed in farther and farther as we tune over time. So I'm just going to back mine out a little bit, a little bit, so that I know I have plenty of room to tune. And that doesn't matter now because I'm about to take off all my strings, so it doesn't matter if I'm in tune. I'm going to start with my A string, and um, I'm just gently going to place my thumb right here, gently on top of my bridge on the A string so that when I unscrew this peg, there's not a big jolt to the bridge. So I'm starting with my A string because that's the top peg up here and I just like to go in order of top to bottom. So there we go. We unscrew that A string. So if, you, if you're afraid of changing your strings, you haven't done it before, don't be worried about it. Um, I know that it can feel intimidating the first time you do it or if, um, if you haven't really worked with your pegs very much, that can feel like a new thing when you're doing that for the first time, but don't sweat it because it's easier than it seems. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm starting with my A string, popping the new string out. I'm using prim medium tension strings because I find that those are the um, best ones for me and my fiddle. I really like the clear tone that they give. All right. And so I'm gonna pop this string into the tail piece down here where that's, that holder for the string is. Um, it may not stay in there while I'm tuning and that's fine. We'll just take care of that again later. I'm up here threading the string through the peg, through the hole at the side that's closest to me. And then we're going to turn the peg away from you, turning the peg clockwise away from you, so that the string winds on the right side of that hole. And what I'm doing right now is I'm pulling the peg out ever so slightly um, out, kind of towards my right, so that the string is flush with this inside of the scroll, that wall, and that automatically just winds your string into a nice, neat, organized little coil, which is exactly what we want. Beautiful. Okay, so now that I know my string is in this groove up here on the nut and also in the groove where it needs to go on the bridge, I'm going to begin gently pushing the, pushing the peg in um, this way, counter to the way I was pulling it before. So I'm pushing the peg in, and the reason I'm doing that turn is because, and this is amazing, um, this tension of you just pushing your peg in is all that's going to hold your string in. So it's important to push that in as you change your string so that the peg, um, is pushed, um, it's has enough tension in the scroll to hold that string where it needs to be. So if your if your peg slips and your string unwinds, it goes flat again, it just means you didn't push hard enough. So don't be afraid here. Your fiddle is built for this. And you can really push that peg in as you're changing your strings. All right, I'm getting a notification here that something might be wonky with the stream, so we'll see. Um, hopefully it's all right, but we'll go with it. Um, all right, I'm gonna move my D string. That's the next peg down up here. Same thing, gently placing my thumb on the bridge. Gently unwinding. And then when you get to a certain point, often you don't have to turn the peg. Just unwind as you pull it. There we go. All right, gently popping that out of the tail piece. I'm gonna grab my D string here. Let's see which one that is. Right here, okay. And I'm gonna unwrap that. All right.
So if you have, I'm not going to do it now because I did it pretty recently, but um, you can you can add, you take a pencil, a sharp pencil, and add a little bit of graphite to these grooves that hold your strings on your bridge. And that helps the strings slide really easily when you're tuning um, um, so that you're not moving around um, every time you tune. And it also just makes things easier and um, gives you more control because that string will slide really easily. So if that's something you need to do, this is the time to do it before you put the string on. All right, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm pulling the peg out this time on my left because we're using a peg on the left here, out towards the outside wall of the scroll here. And it's winding that string into a nice neat coil. Um, once there's a bit of tension on the string, I go up here on the nut, make sure it's in the groove, and down here on the bridge, make sure it's where it needs to be, where it needs to be. And now I'm gonna start pushing in as I wind the peg away from me. On the left, we're turning the peg counterclockwise. It's not perfectly in tune, but we're rolling with it because I know I'm going to tune it later. Okay, now moving on to everyone's least favorite string to change. We're going to move to this E string. That's the next peg down. Um, I'm going to put my first finger gently on the bridge. There we go. Now the E string is not my favorite string to change because it is the thinnest string, but I've never broken an E string while I've been changing a string. So even if you feel intimidated by this one, be not afraid. All right, grabbing my E string. Personally, I like to use an aluminum wound E string because I find that they whistle less. So that's a, a personal preference. Many folks find that just that plain prim E string works great for them. So if that's you, great, go for it. Um, unwinding this E. Now on your E string, you're gonna notice there's this little sleeve, this little plastic sleeve. Um, this is useful because it keeps your E string from cutting into your bridge because this is such a fine string that when you put tension on it, it can um, dig into your bridge in a way that we don't want. So um, when you're putting on your E string, we're gonna start with the same process, same basic idea here, but we'll just check back in with that sleeve in a minute. So I'm threading the string through the hole on the side closest to me. And now I'm gonna turn that peg away from me counterclockwise. Again, we're winding the string against that closest wall of the scroll. And I'm maintaining some tension in my, my left hand as I hold this string here, just so that, oops, so that we maintain that nice, neat coil. So now this is a good opportunity. The string just popped out of the tailpiece, no big deal. We just hook it back in and carry on our merry way. All right, so we're getting to a point where there's a bit of tension on the string. So now, not only I'm going to um, make sure that the string is in this ridge up here on the nut and down here on the bridge, but now I'm going to adjust this sleeve and I'll, I'll give you a closer look here so that it's flush with the bridge on the side. So take a look here. Yep, you can see that. So that green sleeve, we want not to be overlapping the bridge. So we don't want it to go past the bridge onto the side of the strings where you're actually gonna play. But we do want it to be right level with that side. So adjust that. And remember, it'll get pulled forward slightly as you make this string sharper. All right, I'm hanging on to this peg. And now since we've got some tension, I'm gonna push it and twist. This on my E string, I like to move a little bit slower just to make sure we don't break anything. Keep pushing that peg in. And sometimes, if I feel like the string is getting close to where I want it to be, but I'm feeling a lot of tension on it, I'll give it a little pinch like this just to stretch it out a little bit. Not necessary, but it can be a helpful step. I'm getting close. Cannot 
not hear your target note, like you're not sure where A is, um, just put a tuner on your fiddle and check yourself as you tune up these strings. So we don't want to go too far past that target note and put additional tension on the strings when we don't need to. So here's my G string. This is the last string. And I'm going to reach here for my new one. All right, we're getting there. And this doesn't take too long, as you can see. Um, give yourself give yourself a little while to do it the first time, and then every time you do it after that, you're going to feel more and more comfortable with it. And so um, today in office hours, Cynthia asked a really good question, which is, how do you know when you should change your strings? And what I usually go by is I try and change my strings every three to four months or so, depending on how much I'm playing. But you know what? Sometimes I don't make it consistently in that time window. Sometimes I wait a little bit longer. And you, you can do that, but you'll know that it's time to change your strings when you start hearing your strings sounding a little bit fuzzy a little bit dead, um, and when you notice that your strings are difficult to tune. Because old strings don't like to stay in tune very well. So now I'm adjusting. As I'm adjusting these strings, Still pushing in the pegs. Because we still need still need that tension. Now I think I'm about there. I'm just gonna take a look at my bridge and make sure that it's not creeping forward. And and then I'm gonna give it one final tune using my bow. So let's do that. So now this one's super flat. I'm not going to bother to do that with my fine tuner. I'm just gonna go up there to the peg. have new strings. I hope this is helpful and I hope you enjoy that new set of strings. See ya.